Hello everyone, this is Jim Johnson from Technical Training Associates and I want to welcome you to this video training segment. We're going to be focusing on a specific troubleshooting problem. The problem is, is that the customer is called to say that the equipment is not cooling like it's supposed to and whenever you get a service call there are several questions that you want to ask yourself so that you can get a bearing on what it is you're going to be dealing with. The first question is, what is the specific type of equipment that the customer is talking about? By the way, it could be just, say, heat pump, that's one thing, but what about the difference between, say, for example, troubleshooting a split system as opposed to a package unit? So the specific type of equipment is very important. The second question you want to answer is, what is the customer's specific description of the problem? Do they just say it's not cooling? Do they say it's sitting dead? Do they say it's making some noise? So that's another point that you want to understand. The specific type of equipment along with what the customer's specific description of the problem is. The next question you want to consider is what is the history of this equipment? Has it been repaired before? If so, what did the technician do the last time they were there? So that's another point that you want to understand. And here we have the schematic diagram for this particular unit. Now there's a couple things that we want to mention about this diagram. When you take the access panel off of this particular heat pump, this is the diagram that you see. We also want you to understand that as you're looking at this diagram, you're thinking about the information that you got from the customer about the history of this problem. And the history is that a little less than a year ago, they were having the same problem with this piece of equipment. They said that it wasn't cooling, and a technician came out, and all they know is they replaced the part, and it got to be cooling again, but now the same problem is happening. So I want you to understand, this is the original schematic diagram. Now, one of the things we want to mention, though, so that you get a complete handle on how this piece of equipment operates, is we want you to take a look at this schematic diagram and identify what the components are. First of all, I want you to take a look at the MS, or motor starter, or contactor, if you prefer to call it that. You're going to notice that this diagram clearly shows that we have what we refer to as a single pole contactor. In other words, there's only one normally open contact point. The other point I want you to understand is that this particular piece of equipment employs two capacitors in its original format. One is labeled CA, in other words, capacitor A. The other one is labeled CB, which is capacitor number two. And you're going to notice that both of these capacitors are wired in series with the start winding. That's a point that we want to make there. Now the compressor itself, as long as we identify the compressor, we can understand the start winding here, the run winding here, and we also have another piece of information about the compressor that we can understand. This compressor has an internal overload protector, and the reason that we know that's true is because OL in this situation is the overload, and you're going to notice that it's wired on this side of the common terminal for the compressor. So common, run, and start on the compressor, showing the motor windings, and this is showing the internal overload and because it's on this side of the common terminal. Moving on down to this component here, we want to show this component here, even though it's not part of the problem. The symptoms that we're getting, like we said, is that the compressor itself is trying to start and kicking off on overload, and what we understand is that the fan motor, FM in this case, stands for outdoor fan motor, this particular outdoor fan motor uses its own run capacitor, as you can see here. And this fan motor, in our situation, is running okay, but it's part of the diagram, so we want to explain it. Now, the other thing we want to talk about here is this device right here. This device right here is an outdoor fan motor thermostat. Since it's a heat pump, we have a situation where this manufacturer has decided that in a low ambient situation and a higher ambient situation, we'll be able to go back and forth between a high and low speed with the outdoor fan motor in order to maintain proper high side refrigerant pressure. Now when we get back to this problem up here, we want to talk a little bit more about the original design of this compressor. The original design of this compressor is that this capacitor, as you can see, if you were to trace a circuit on this particular compressor and follow directly down this line here and follow through that capacitor right there, you would notice that what we have here is a circuit that goes through the start winding and goes all the way back over to the other side of the line. And 
Right in here, what you can see here is we're showing you the single pole motor starter, or MS as we called it, or contactor, and you can see that this side of the contactor right here is always going to be closed, and this side of the contactor over here is only going to be closed when we energize the coil and cause the contacts to go down. So that is your single pole contactor that we're looking at right there. Now the other components that were in the diagram that we want to talk about are related to these components right over here. As you can see, we have two different size capacitors. In this case, the manufacturer could well have, according to that diagram, used a smaller capacitor for the trickle circuit, this first one right here, and then when the uh, contactor coil was energized and pulled down, then we would have both capacitors in the circuit. We want to point out that the fact is, is that these two capacitors, when they're wired in the circuit according to the diagram that we're showing you, they are wired in parallel. So what we would do is we would add up the total capacitance so that we would know what was exactly in that circuit going through the start winding in the run mode. Now this is one way that they would show them. The other way that a manufacturer could show this situation is with a dual capacitor like this. In other words, this capacitor, which very often you might see this kind of capacitor on a situation where you have uh, both capacitors, one for a compressor and one for a fan motor, but it could be that those two capacitors, rather than being shown individually as we showed it here, could be shown in one capacitor. You could be encountering that. Remember, your job is to interpret what you see on the schematic diagram to what you see in real life. Now, this particular capacitor right here, when you encounter this type of capacitor, what we want to point out is that when you look closely right here, you're going to notice that this bridge, as we could call it right here, there's only one terminal on the side of this bridge. In most cases, what that means is this is going to be the common terminal. If you're not sure, look closely for the markings on the capacitor case. But in this case, we've determined that this is in fact the common terminal of this particular set of capacitors. Now what we're going to do is put one lead of our meter on this side, and then what we'll do is put one lead of the meter on what we've identified as a separate set of terminals down there, and what you can see is that we have almost 60 microfarads. So this would be capacitor B. And now what we've done here is we've isolated only that compressor circuit because we want to talk a little bit more about that problem. We mentioned earlier, like we said, that there are two capacitors, and we also tested them. And as you recall, one capacitor that we tested was just in the neighborhood of 60 microfarads, okay? Now that means that this is the main capacitor here. And then the other capacitor that we tested, as you recall, was right around the neighborhood of only 5 microfarads. What that means is, is that since these capacitors are wired in parallel, the total capacitance that we will have running through this start winding when the motor is operating as a PSC or permanent split capacitor operation will be a total of 65 microfarads. And now moving on to this diagram, we want to show you about the history of that previous repair. What you can see here is that we still have the compressor as it's shown, but the previous technician made an error when they serviced this particular piece of equipment. What they did was they ignored this trickle circuit right here and instead replaced the failed capacitor with only one capacitor that was the total microfarad rating, which was okay as far as the run mode goes, but what happened when that person replaced that capacitor and did no longer have a second capacitor up here that went to the start winding in the off cycle, they eliminated what we called that trickle heat circuit in the off cycle so in order to completely troubleshoot this problem situation, we need to make sure that we do a test of this compressor from an electrical perspective. And what we've done is we've isolated the compressor here and we have the three wires that lead to the common, the run, and the start windings of the compressor. What we're going to do is do an electrical check to find out exactly what may be going on with this particular compressor. We're going to start out by putting this lead on the common terminal, and then we're going to take this lead of our meter and put it on what we know to be the run terminal of this particular compressor. And what you can see there is that we've got just about one ohm resistance, and that is true because we're testing the run winding of the compressor. In other words, knowing what right is in the first place tells us that this is what it's supposed to be, and you can see that our meter is telling us that's correct. When we move over to test this particular winding right here, though, what you can see is we're going to have a different resistance reading. The resistance reading that we're going to get on our meter for this particular test is going to be just shy of 2 ohms resistance, which means we are in fact testing the start winding of the compressor. So the bottom line on testing the compressor is very simple. 
We've done the electrical tests and we know that the compressor is okay electrically. So what that leads us to is our troubleshooting question. What is the underlying cause of the failure of this compressor?